Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and today I want to show you around my seedling room. It's only early April so things aren't really at their fullest potential yet, but some things are like the, the cold hardy annuals and my, my tomatoes actually are doing really really good. But first I wanted to show you some clips that I've shot over the past 10 days but I haven't actually had time to turn into videos. So here's what's been happening around Flower Hill Farm for the past 10 days. Chewbacca down there. Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and I am six weeks from my last frost date and this is marathon seed starting season. I have so much to do and so much to do with my seedling sale too, since we are about six weeks away from that as well. So I have a ton of tomatoes that need to be potted up into their own space. I've got a 10 year old boxer who's keeping me company down here. She's pacing and making Chewbacca noises. She's cracking me up. And she just loves this new grow space. She goes in and out of the grow space. A lot of you guys had mentioned that maybe I should put like Velcro or magnets to shut the doors of my grow room down here, but I can't do that because my 10 year old dog likes to take laps. So I'm gonna let her do that. So my mother-in-law is actually here. We are gonna start all of my status today, the rest of my Snapdragon, the rest of my Gonfrina. There's so much to start. <sighs> and she's helping me. So thankful for the family help that I've been getting lately. I think everyone realizes that this isn't just like a hobby that Nicole's doing anymore. This is an actual business. So I'm getting a lot of help from a lot of people whom I love. So she was also here yesterday and we spent probably six hours starting seeds and potting up tomatoes. So I had a lot of tomatoes for the seedling sale and I put sometimes up to six or eight seeds in one little hole. And that's a method that I use to save space on the heat mat like with other things that I do. So now we are going to be finishing off that job with the tomatoes. We're gonna to be potting up my nasturtium. We're going to be starting status and all of those seeds that I was talking about plus a succession planting of several other things. So let's go up to the garage and see. So she just thinned out one and a half rows of the small red cherries and we filled an entire tray. So we're gonna have like what, 10 trays of these small red cherries? This is gonna be crazy. <laughs> I hope the people at the seedling sale want small red cherry tomatoes. Otherwise, I'll be eating them. Oh, look, we dehydrate them and made, we can make sun dried cherry tomatoes. <laughs> they'll get good, they'll get put to use. So, this is a tray of, what is it? Black crim tomatoes, and I started them in soil blocks, and now they are the perfect size to pot up to the two inch soil blocker. So I started them in the three quarter inch soil blocker and now I'm gonna make two inch soil blocks and there's actually a little bit of an insert that you can add onto this soil blocker in order to make that little indentation for the three quarter inch soil blocker. I've actually never done this with tomatoes before. I've done this with some other things. So this will be my first time using it to pot up tomatoes. I found them, I thought maybe I had lost the inserts. So these little white inserts that came with the soy blocker pop out and then you put the black inserts which are the same size, they're the three quarter inch soil block. So they'll make the indentation when you're making the soil block and then you slip the three quarter inch soil block right inside. So about a week ago, I showed you how I used like a takeout container or any kind of like leftover strawberry container, something that you would recycle normally for like little germination chambers. And I started my nasturtium in here because I didn't want to have a poor germination rate in my 50 plug trays. So it's been about a week and I have amazing germination. I mean, there are a ton of little babies popping up and now I'm gonna transplant these up into a 50 plug tray and then that way I'll have a full tray of nasturtium babies. So in my previous video, I had three varieties of nasturtium, but I forgot I actually had a fourth packet of nasturtium that I had just purchased, and that is right here. So right here on this tray is Orchid Cream Nasturtium. I started this three days later on March 30th, and because so many of you guys suggested soaking the nasturtium seeds, 
I went ahead and I soaked these nasturtium seeds before planting them. So we'll see if these have a better germination rate than the ones that I did not soak. But I'm not going to complain about this germination rate. Last year, I don't know if I was using old seed or something, but I had a 25 seed packet and I only had two plants. That, or maybe it was... There were a few more. It was like five or six plants, but it was not 25. Look at the root on that one. They develop roots real quick. I just realized that that was the seed tray that I counted and there were 44 seeds and I only had two, two that didn't germinate in seven days. I might just put these in and just to see what they do. But out of 44 seeds, 42 germinated. That's awesome. I'm super happy with that. These are the stock babies that are out here. And they were out here uncovered on my porch and it got down to 30 degrees last night. So I am super confident that these are ready to go in the ground because the forecast for the next two weeks is looking good. I think uh, the lowest that we have is 30, 32 degrees. So they're gonna be fantastically happy. So this is the perfect size to transplant from soil blocks. You don't want them to be too big. There's a couple that are a little bit bigger in here and that's fine. Uh, like this one right here. This looks just perfect. Can you see it? It's wonderful. I love it. Anyway, I'm so excited for these. Now I did start more seeds downstairs and they just haven't germinated yet. Okay, so you're gonna see updates from some of those things that I that I just showed you in those little clips because it's been several days since those little clips were shot. I also, at the end of this video, wanted to share with you a little clip of, of my sister-in-law coming over on Easter morning and um, surprising the kids. It was quite the belly laugh. So that'll be later on at the end of this video. But right now, we're in the grow room. If you haven't seen it, I built this grow room. I don't even know what the measurements are. We just put plastic up on the ceiling, on the side walls. I'll link the video up above for how we built this room. And down in here, I have five shelving units and they're all from Lowe's. They're all the exact same shelving unit. They're heavy duty. They're probably heavier duty than you need for seedlings, but I like the look of them. I like having all of them. And I've had those wire shelves that I've seen everyone using before with the, uh, I don't know, the not so sturdy wire with the plastic hinges, like the plastic joints. And I've had those actually fall apart on me. So I kind of wanted to steer away from those and get these ones that I know are going to stand the test of time. Let's start with my heat mats. Super boring. Gonna show you anyway. So I only have three heat mats set up. I will be setting up, I have two others that came in the mail. So I do need to set the other two up and that will be this weekend's project because I'm gonna be starting a lot more seeds this weekend. But over here on this heat mat, I have pink gomfrina and actually it's time to take that off the heat mat because I see a lot of activity. Okay, so this entire tray is pink gomfrina. I have big plans for all of these beauties so you can see there is a ton. Well, can you see it? There are a ton of little babies and uh, they're pink. The, the tops of them are pink. That's why I love about a lot of these is that they show their true colors, even in the seedling form. And I'm gonna show you that on the Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus. It's really cool the way that changes as it grows. Okay, so then back here I have a tray of lime basil and these are just starting to sprout and the next one down the line i have catnip just for fun why not and then i have snapdragons a whole bunch of snapdragons and right here on this white tray we have oh giant perfection aster mix and i do not see any germination on this yet so far i did these in soil blocks so that's the first heat mat. Over here, I have Morning Glories. So Creatively Candice, one of the followers here, uh, sent me a care package the other day and including, oh, I have germination! Germination. Here's a little baby. Okay, so this is just like a, a dump. So I just dumped all the seeds in here and then I'll be potting them up. Oh my gosh. Here's one of the seedlings. I'm not going to pull it out yet, but 
Oh. Right there. And the one actually right next to it, right there, is also germinating. So what I did here, uh, oh, there's a third. Um, I've actually never grown morning glory from seed. Uh, in the past, I've always grown them with my, my peas, like the edible peas. I've grown them at the bottom, but I always bought the starts from the store, and I thought this was, thank you so much, Candace. I think this will be a great addition both to my garden, but also to my seedling sale, because there were about 50 seeds in here. So in here, what I initially did, it said to soak the seeds for about 24 hours. So I did soak the seeds overnight and then I just put them in here and then I'll pop them up into their own individual pots and I'll show you what I use for that. If I'm not using the recycled paper or peat pots, um, I'm using something else that's recycled. I'll talk about that in a minute. All right, over here I have more snapdragons. I just started another set of snapdragons because I'm a little bit worried about the ones that I have on the shelf and I'll tell you about that in just a minute as well. Fever few. Oh, I have a few of these popping up on soil blocks. I have apricot aster back there. I have carmine gomfrina, which is a beautiful raspberry color. And then I have yellow euphorbia, which is a seed from Florette. And I do actually have a bunch of these germinating. I should probably put this under the light. It's about 50% germination, which is about when I take things off of the heat mat and put them under the lights. You don't want them to get too leggy, you know, either reaching away from the heat or reaching toward the light because plants can get leggy two different ways. Maybe it's too hot for them on the heat mat and they're trying to, they grow so that they can get away from the heat or they're growing toward the light. Sometimes it's hard to tell which is happening. Oh, this is also another seed from Candace. This is a waspanicon. Waspipinicon, waspipinicon peach, tomato. It's a tomato, it's a peach tomato. And I'm actually getting a few germinating right here. More snapdragons. Orange gomfrina, I actually have quite a few. Orange gomfrina, can you see? <laughs> Let me turn the camera. So this is the other set of heat mats, the other two, which I've been showing you. And they're, set, they're all set at about 72 degrees. And here, I have lilac gomfrina, and back here, ooh, this is a full tray. This is a fully germinated tray. This is another stock. I have more stock. I just can't help myself. I'm so excited. This is my final, I think, set of stock, and this needs to go under lights, but I need to find a spot. My racks are kind of full. Right here, I have a whole entire soil block of straw flowers that's starting to germinate. Over here, I have ageratum mix. This final one in the back here is, oh, a whole bunch of different snapdragons. Yep, chantillies. Those are the chantilly varieties. I have two fans in here. I have this fan that blows. I turned it off right now just because um, it makes a lot of noise. I didn't want that background noise in my video. And then on the other end, I do have another fan on the floor. And I've been rotating plants on the shelf to put them in the line of fire for the fan because it does help make the plant sturdier, bulkier, and I'll show you on these tomatoes. Phenomenal, I'm so excited. So we'll start here with shelf number one. So up here I have, it's gonna be hard to pull these tomatoes out because they're so tall that they're hitting the lights, but these are San Marzano tomatoes. Let's see. Yeah, if I just lifted the one light, no problem. So these are just super healthy and amazing looking. Some of them are five, six inches tall. Uh, I really am excited about these. This is a tomato that I've been wanting to grow for a long time. My grandfather actually is excited about this too. This is the one tomato that he's like, Nicole, I need to get some of those San Marzanos. So he's definitely going to be the owner of a few of these. I actually have several of these trays of San Marzano tomatoes. Very exciting. So we'll go over the rest of the tomatoes on here. So I've potted these up. These are also San Marzano. They're a lot smaller though, because I have these ones in the direct line of the fan down here and they're just growing and growing at such a crazy rate. The only difference is these ones are, uh, we're in the line of fire of the fan and these ones were not. Of course they were germinating at different rates as well. So we transplanted those the other day and then I also have this tray of tomatoes. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, they're getting so sturdy, just look. Well, I have to get close up pictures of the stems. These are, I don't even know what these are. San Marzano. 
<laughs> so these are all also San Marzano. I started a lot. I think I said in a video earlier that I, I, I ended up with, I think that I bought seed packets of 25 each. I bought three of them. And they ended up having a hundred of them. Uh, 100 seeds in each packet. Tomatoes behind them are, these are Abe Lincoln's and Amish paste tomatoes. So these are growing just as well, but they're just not as tall, but they look really healthy and beautiful. And I might, it's fertilizer. No, tomorrow's fertilizer Friday. Okay. So the rest of the stuff on the shelf is different. Let me go, let me do the rest of the tomatoes and then we'll do the other things. So these, are the tomatoes that I put up in the two inch soil blocks. I transferred the three quarter inch soil block to the two inch soil block. And these are all black crim tomatoes. They're labeled on the side. So I just wanted to see how, if there was any difference when potting up tomatoes into a pot or a two inch soil block. So got these. And then I also have smaller trays of tomatoes. We've got another tray of San Marzano. This is another tray of San Marzano. <laughs> And then I have, what is this one back here? One moment, please. These ones need water. They need water. And they don't have a label. They don't have a label. I guess these will be labeled mystery tomatoes. I know, I try have tomatoes. I put all my tomatoes on one shelf. Okay, so wait, no I didn't. There's more down there. <laughs> these are small red cherry tomatoes and they're transplanted into recycled school lunch milk cartons. My BFF Susan is a preschool teacher and she saves all the milk cartons for me from snack time. So these ones on the end are not potted up yet and there are actually some empty ones right there. But look how perfectly they fit in the 1080 tray. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times four, 32, 32 tomato plants in this uh, 1080 tray, which is pretty good. Uh, much better than the peat pots because the peat pots, I can only fit like 16, I think, in there. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So there's 19 peat pots in a 1080 plug tray and there are 32 recycled milk cartons. Plus they're recycled milk cartons and they cost me zero dollars. Oh, so sorry. Let's finish off this shelf. Whew, it's taken a while. Okay, so remember the trailing nasturtiums that I started? Check them out. They look so good. Really great germination. I'm going to be potting these up into 50 plug trays or maybe even milk cartons if I decide to sell some at my seedling sale. I probably will. This is gonna be, I think it's supposed to rain on Sunday. So Sunday's project is to pot things up again and start more seeds. The rest of the time I have to spend outside because I have 10,000 things to plant. Okay, over here is the rest of the nasturtium. The ones I started in the strawberry. See it? Aren't they amazing? <laughs> These ones are uh, the Yeti, so the yellow nasturtiums. Really great germination, really healthy plants. Gotta pot them out of here, put them in the 50s. I'm gonna do that, like I said, on Sunday. What else do we have over here? Okay, so we have, is this a basil? Yes. So this is a tray of cinnamon basil that I started the other day. It doesn't smell like cinnamon basil yet, but it will very soon. And there is a tiny tray of Dusty Miller right here. It's a tiny tray. There are, well, there's a few that are germinating. Blue status seedlings. Guys, I know some of this is gonna be like, oh wow, there's little specks of green. But I'm gonna do this video again in a month and we'll compare the difference between the sizes. So this is blue status that was started just five days ago. Five days of growth on the status. I swear they germinate overnight. And the final one to show you from here is this right here. This is a 50 plug tray. I started 25 mahogany hibiscus, which are on this side. And then I started, well, a lot more tw than 25 of the winged mobium because the uh, seeds were so tiny that I just kind of spread them in the holes. And there are like four or five in each hole. So I'm gonna have to go through and thin them. But I wanted to show you the mahogany hibiscus and I'll get a close up shot of this. But So they sprout green. When you're at the end of the season and you're harvesting this, it's totally cranberry from the ground up. Mahogany, it's the mahogany splendor hibiscus. From the ground up, it is mahogany. So why is it green right now? <laughs> but it's changing. So you could see the center of the plant right now is starting to change to that deep mahogany color. 
and I'm so excited to watch the transformation because this was my favorite thing last year. It just, especially because it was ready in the fall and that mahogany color just with the sunflowers, it was unbelievably gorgeous and I'm so excited. I did not grow this last year. I had Gina's crop, my, my flower friend Gina who lives about an hour from me. We, um, I bought a lot of her flowers last year. We shared secrets. She's my flower friend Gina. Anyway, and then the winged amobium. I will, I don't know if I should just, I'm really bad at thinning because I don't thin and throw, I thin and replant. So I'm not, I'm not gonna have any room on my shelves. Orchid cream nasturtium. I didn't show you guys a video of me planting this, but these ones I decided to pre-soak because a lot of you guys said, I've always pre-soaked my nasturtium seeds and then planted them. I said, let me do an experiment. Let me see if there's a difference in germination between the soaked ones and the non-soaked ones. And I have to tell you, I think the ones that I didn't soak had better germination. So I'm not sure if it's beneficial to even soak the nasturtium, but some people said that it works for them. So if it works for you, go ahead and do it. Let's start with everybody's favorite, the eucalyptus. Out of all of the eucalyptus that I started this year, I only have two left. Let me get this bag of organza bags out of here. These are my eucalyptus. These are the only two plants that I have left and I'm okay, I'm happy with them. They're not crazy big, but they're bigger than they were last year for me. <laughs> so that's a plus, they need to be watered or they're a little bit light. Okay, everybody who's been waiting for this update, this is the Jessica Dahlia. So the Jessica Dahlias are growing real well. I need to get under the light a little bit better. There. So the Jessica Dahlias, I, had, I ended up with germination two on this side, so I moved one over, so one in each hole now. Need to water that side. I don't know why I didn't water that side. So these are the ones that my sister bought and she thought they were like neon blue. Turns out there are no neon blue dahlias. <laughs> so we'll see what these end up being. They are dahlias, but we don't know what they're going to be. So I'm excited to watch these grow this year. This is another tray of stock. These probably should go outside because they're about the size where I like to harden them off and put them outside. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is soil blocked tomato plants and these are Japanese black trifle or trifel? Trifle or trifel. So these are, <laughs> there are 40 tomato plants just right here in these soil blocks and they're doing fantastic. They need to be potted up. That's this Sunday's project. Oh. <laughs> I give you purple basil. This is dark opal purple basil. It was phenomenal last year. I loved growing this. And I usually just keep it all for myself and put it next to my tomatoes in the garden. Brace yourselves for basil. Here is the Genovese basil. And this smells like basil. I want a caprese salad right now. I'll be right back. I'm selling this at my plant sale. Selling it at my plant sale. I have to pot it up soon. Where are all these potted up plants gonna go? Nobody knows. In the back corner, weighing in at seven ounces is foxglove. So foxglove, gotta tell you, germination has been poor and they take a million years to grow from seed. That's my germination on my foxglove. This is the Cafe Cream foxglove. I mean, it's not horrible, but it could be better. But this is the case with all of my foxgloves. So Maybe I'm not going to soil block these next year. So my friend Gina has been using a method called channel growing, which is similar to my throw it all in a box and see what happens method. And she's having great success using the channels. I think I might try to do channels next year since I am using the just throw it all in a pan method and see what comes up and then transplanting everything later. It is taking her quite a long time to transplant everything, but at least she doesn't have empty giant wastes of space on her grow shelves because 
it's not fun coming down here. I'm probably gonna transfer everything into a smaller uh, dish and move on. This is yellow mellow echinacea. Same, it's, it looks like it doesn't have a lot of germination, but I can tell you that most of the ones that you don't see green are actually coming up. You can see where the green's coming from the bottom. So this is actually about 75% germination. If you look real close, you could see where they're emerging up from the bottom. So I'm excited about these. I, I don't think I have, do I even have mellow yellow in bare root? I don't think so. I just got the purple, the white swan, and the, the green twister, and then the that double one. So no, I don't have uh, mellow yellow in the bare root, but I have them in this. And the last thing on this top shelf is a tray of lisianthus that's kind of stunted. So half my lisianthus trays have just kind of stopped growing, and the other half are flourishing. So I'm not even sure why, but this is a tray of lisianthus and they're about the size of a nickel. So I'm not super impressed with these ones. I don't know if it's, it can't be the variety because it's the entire tray and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine varieties in this tray. So I think it just doesn't like these conditions. And honestly, it's got a little bit of algae growth on top, like, like more than just a little bit. So maybe it's just there's um, too much uh, competition for the soil. Shelf. Two. Oh my gosh, this is gonna take forever. Sorry guys. Oh, oh! <laughs> Can't wait to stick my face in you! Mrs. Burns Citrus Lemon Basil started on April 2nd. So this was started six days ago and this is the amazingness that is Mrs. Burns Lemon Basil. This will turn into this in no time. So this was started on March 13th. So this is like three and a half weeks of growth and this is four days of growth. It'll catch up real quick. I'm excited about it. So some of this will go to my um, seedling sale, but most of this is gonna go into the ground for me for my fillers. Look at this germination. This is amazing. This is, oh, sorry. Mm. This is orange gomfrina. Orange gomfrina and it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing. I'm excited about the orange this year. I did not grow orange last year. This is still working on its germination. This is El the Aster Val Valkyrie mix. Valkyrie mix, yes. So it's still working on germination. It's got pretty decent germination so far, but uh, doing real good. Okay, so here's another tray of Foxglove. Again, with this body germination. I mean, it could be worse, but this is the Camelot mix first year. So these are the ones that are supposed to bloom the first year into the ground. The rest of the ones that I have that are not Camelot mix are second year flowering foxglove. So these are, these should be throwing flowers for me this year. I have two or three trays of these going and they all kind of have the same germination. It's not great. Wow, look at this amazing germination on my phlox. Oh. <laughs> so this is Flox Blushing Bride. This is Flox Sugar Stars. I have one. There is one. The germination on this is garbage. Okay, I will admit it's last year's seed. This is this year's seed. This is last year's seed. I have one. I will treasure you. I will name you. You will be my friend. But still though, one? Come on, anybody else experiencing that with Sugar Stars flocks? Super disappointed. The flocks are gonna go start, it, they're gonna start to harden off. Um, I have a second tray of these too. <laughs> moving on, moving on people, we have. All right, in one of those video clips, you just saw me put this, oh gosh. Oh, sorry. Yellow sticky paper. Didn't like being moved. Okay, oh, I'm afraid my hair is gonna get caught. Tuck that in. In one of the videos, you just saw me pot up the nasturtium. Here they are. Look how great they look. And then the ones weren't doing anything that I put in anyway. They still haven't done anything. So 42 out of 44. It's not a bad day's work. These, I did not soak these, by the way. I'm either gonna have a really successful seedling sale or a garden full of nasturtium. I'll take either. Another tray of status. We have apricot status and we have yellow status, both doing really well. At the bottom, guys, I have the most, the most algiest tray of all my trays is the 200 of delphinium. And this is not horrible germination for delphinium because delphinium just has horrible germination. Anyway, this is cherry, 
Cherry Blossom Delphinium, and this was the best germination I had out of any of my Delphinium. It's covered in algae, but it's okay. It's not hurting the plants, so I'm leaving it. Oh, here is a tray of yarrow. What the thrip? I must have ignored this one. It's super dry, like, like super dry. Apparently I missed this one watering. Gotta water it. Anyway, these are all cherry tomatoes. Sorry, I'm sorry. Last thing on this shelf to show you is the Lysianthus that the man gave me, the man, you know. So if you're new here, back in February, I got a phone call from a guy I don't know who lives in my town who said, that he used to grow flowers 15, 20 years ago. He is now retired and is getting back into it and he had started too many Lysianthus for his space. So he dropped off Lysianthus to me and I've potted them up into this 200 plug tray and they look great. So they're all different varieties. I have them labeled on the side, whole bunch of different ones. And I was excited because I don't think it was, I think the only one that I was actually growing myself was the apricot and everything else was a variety that I did not have out of the 21 varieties that I decided to grow this year. Thank you, Mark. The man has a name, his name is Mark. <laughs> Shelving unit three. So we're on the other side of the light. I might have to bring trays over. So this is shelving unit three. I'm gonna put this back over by the light and bring you guys the trays because I cannot function. Aha, how about this way? This way, yes. Yes. Here we have a really great tray of Rubeckia. There's three different kinds. There's Chim Chimney, Gloriosa, and Cherry Brandy. I believe I started these in a video. Uh, you'll see that these ones right here in the middle, which are the what? What's that say? The Gloriosa. They're uh, a lot bigger. They're growing a lot faster than the others, but they're all looking good. Really great germination on the Rubeckias. The germination on this foxglove is surprising. This is the Pink Gin foxglove. This was started on February 28th, guys. Foxglove are so slow. But this is a second year flowering plant, won't be a first year. Sometimes though, sometimes you get a random flower out of the second year flowering plants. Don't know why, it's a miracle. More stock, I couldn't help myself. This is the Iron Cherry stock. And this was started just six days ago. I can't wait to come back here in a month and show you guys the progress. It's so fun to watch things go from zero to 60. This is oops let me get into the light this is oryngium so i had a little bit of an issue with the watering this this portion this portion dried out and all of the ones in this corner died but the rest were okay this is rattlesnake master oryngium or white glitter not quite sure here's another tray of pink gin foxglove a little bit smaller than the other one and i because i started it uh a week and a half later this is my nicest tray of Lysianthus. I think they're beautiful. I know some people have ones that are better looking than this. I know that there are better looking Lysianthus than mine, but I am so proud of these guys. I am so proud of them. They're starting to grow up now, not just out. I'm getting some height on them. They're growing their little, their little stalks. I'm so excited. Although I will tell you that Gina, my flower friend Gina with the magical grow room, hers are five inches tall. I'm just kidding. She sends me pictures and I'm just like drooling. Gina's magic. Oh, I think there's a male person here. My dogs are barking. I'm so excited. It's not the mailman. My grandpa and my uncle Anthony, my great uncle Anthony, just surprise visit to see the gardens outside. I'm not crying. I'm gonna go bring the camera upstairs for a sec and then we'll get back to the grow room. Okay, it's not a garden then. <laughs> no school again? You don't go to I love school. love you so much. Did you graduate? Huh? No. Look at this kid. He's so ugly. Look How's at that pool? Face? How's your pool work? You could have scared me. Doing the, good, that, yeah. The steps go in there? Yep, the steps will drop it down into the pool. Uh-huh. Okay, so the visit was short-lived. It's about five minutes. They just got out of the car, walked around my gardens, and uh, and then headed into town. So a friend of theirs has a fruit stand and vegetable stand up the road. They were just going to say hello. So he's got, he has always hanging baskets and stuff like that. Blooper is making noise today. She was outside until they got here and now she's down here with us. Okay, so where were we? What, like literally, what was the last thing that I showed you? This is my life. <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> okay, so I showed you the Lysianthus. So I also have an entire tray 
of other Lysianthus, or I mean a whole shelf. I'll pull out the first one because they all basically look the same. This is another tray of Lizzie's. I think they look great. They don't look as good as my original tray. These are the Roseanne Greens, the Black Pearls, and the Super Magic Green. I feel a little late. I have to get the waterer out. And then another tray of basically the same. This is a whole bunch of other different kinds. I have so many Lizzie's, guys. Who knows if they're all gonna bloom, but they look good, right? And then another tray of Lysianthus. Some of them are quite larger than others. Who is that? Another tray, is this Roseanne Brown? I actually have a lot of Roseanne Brown. That makes me so happy. I didn't think I was gonna have any. And this is a final tray and it doesn't look great. They're little, they're little, but in my defense, <laughs> these are the ones that I started after. And they also have a lot of that stuff like the other tray, it just has this brownish, greenish, orange film over top of it. They just don't look happy here. I'm sweating, it's, it's humid down here. Okay, onto the bottom shelf of, sh bottom shelf of unit three. Dusty Miller! I have Dusty Miller and it looks, I have yellow, sticky tape. Oh God, oh! It's mostly just dirt. Dusty Miller and the centers are starting to turn white. You can see it right there on that one. Well, that on that one. So it looks like it's spotty germination, but actually there are quite a few just starting to poke their heads up in places where it looks bare. There's a little tiny baby Dusty Miller. That one looks purple. I wonder what that is. That is not, is it Dusty Miller? Is it purple underneath? It is purple underneath. Amazing. Last year I had a full tray and then I never planted them in the ground so it was pointless. We have all different kinds of gomfrina. I have Audrey White Fireworks Gomfrina, which was a gift yeah, from one of my viewers, and Audrey Purple Red. So excited. Last thing on here, I have poppies. Let me grab those. Whew. These are Iceland poppies. They're about three inches tall and I'm probably going to bring them outside to start hardening off. I have another tray that looks identical to that, but this is really long, so unit four, shelf one. This is how I decided to show you this entire <laughs> shelf. These are all tomatoes on this top shelf. We have mortgage lifter, mortgage lifter, blush, and blush. So there are four plug trays, and that's what they all are. So now moving on, I will show you the individual trays. So here I have two trays of Rubecchia. I have Irish Eyes Rubecchia, and I have Rustic. Rubecchia, about the same germination on both. This one is the rustic Rubecchia. This one is the Irish eyes. Kind of want to plant more. Although Gina only had a five foot section of Rubecchia and it bloomed for her like crazy. This is globe thistle. This was yet another gift from a viewer and this was started on March 22nd. And look how amazing they are. Globe thistle. Pa pa pow, parsley. Parsley, doing good. Orlea, I once knew a girl named Orlea. This is Orlea, and it's like a fern, a bed of ferns. It's amazing, and I feel like I should get it into the ground, but I gotta look up the rules. Um, but I do have Orlea direct seeded, and so maybe it can go in. My lows for the next 10 days are only in like 39 to 40, actually there's like a 52 low one night, so I'm not past the risk of freeze, but so far the trends look good. Should she plant half the tray, the whole tray, or none of the tray? That is the question. I have little tiny baby Greek oreganos, little tiny, and this was started March 13th, and this is how big they are. They're teeny tiny. Another tray of yarrow. Yarrow is super cute. I actually thought this was feverfew because it looks so similar. Where's the feverfew? They're very, oh, you can't really tell, but just their general shape of their leaves are very similar. This tray is pink Chinese forget-me-not, and this was a packet of seeds from Florette. Super happy. I think I only have like one 
or two that didn't germinate and the growth on them is, is gorgeous. These were started on March 19th. A very poor germination on the black pansies. There are maybe uh, 15 out of 80 <laughs> that germinated and that's probably my fault. I don't know. March 24th, Cress. I've got little baby straw flowers here, straw flowers. Talk about spotty germination. This is a trait of delphinium and it's, I have maybe 20 out of 240, 20. But some are just starting to sprout and it hasn't hit the three week mark yet. A lot of times delphinium can take three weeks to sprout. So, I mean, I do see a bunch more coming up, but definitely kind of disappointing in the delphinium. I'm definitely going to do the channel um, sprouting for these ones next time. It's just so much wasted space. This is something I won't be channel starting. This is something I'll always do in soil blocks because just look at the germination on the flax. This is cherry, caramel, and starry eyes flax. I mean, and they're ready to go. They're ready to go. They're ready to go outside. So flax, you can start out, well, you can put outside about a month before your last frost date. They are like frost hardy, but just not freeze hardy. This is a tray of long hots, long hot peppers. They're doing really good, 100% um, germination. Uh, look really good. I lied, I just saw an empty hole. Not 100%. Dianthus babies, really good germination. This is the Picotti Fantasy Mix and the Chabon Jean de Bois. There are also two more things of tomatoes on the bottom shelf. And these ones are like the Romas and the triple crop, crop tomatoes. Uh, I'm just super happy with them. Unit five, shelf one. So basically this last shelving unit has mostly snapdragons. And I had a little bit of an issue with my snapdragons and I kind of had a panic the other day um, because the majority of my snapdragons were not putting their roots down into the soil blocks. They were just rooting and growing but not putting their roots into the dirt. And they ended up almost dying. So I literally sat there with a toothpick, it's right here. I spent hours, hours painstakingly pushing roots down into the soil blocks. I've never had this problem before. I don't know if I packed the soil blocks too tightly, but the snapdragons and some of the dianthus also had to be pushed down. And I think that may have been my issue with the black pansies. So perhaps I'm pushing the soil blocks too tightly. And so the roots are having a hard time penetrating, Lila joke here, penetrating the soil. I just think maybe it's having a hard time. Whew. So that's why I, um, when we did the whole heat mat tour, um, there are a lot more snapdragons on there because I'm afraid I lost half my snapdragons because the roots were unable to soak up any nutrients or water or anything like that. And they looked kind of flimsy. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. Some look good, some don't look good at all. And my mom made a big mistake. You're not even gonna be able to really see these, but these are the apple blossom snapdragons. They're just the beginning of them. And I had to take this tray and tuck in all of the roots. It was a painstaking process. I'm proud, like the channel way of doing things just sounds so much better to me right now because this is not good. This, it was not, it was just as time consuming. The same thing with the blushing bride. You can see actually, I, did, I don't think I pushed this tray down yet. Like I have to push the roots into the soil. They're, they're just sitting on top of the soil. Does anybody else have this problem? Like they're, it's just sitting there. I mean, I suppose I could even like put vermiculite on it, but they're dying and shriveling up because the roots are not going into the soil. I've never had this problem with soil blocks before. It's making me question all of my methods. You ever do that? Question everything? <laughs> I'm gonna stop showing you trays of snapdragons that look exactly the same. This is another one. This is the cherry bronze that my mother planted for me. Thank you, mom. So this is the tray, and actually it's the best tray. It's the best and the worst tray, and I'm gonna blame my mother on this one. So she was, <laughs> she was planting snapdragons, and she says, Nicole, my eyes are crossing. I can't see, because they're the tiniest things. So she did really well. Look at, look how good they look. They look really good, but look what she did. She forgot to do the entire back row and she double planted this entire section. I thought it was hysterical that the row all the way on this side is double planted and this one has zero, zero. I sent her a picture. <laughs> She's like, oops. I have an entire shelf on unit five of more snapdragons that look exactly the same. I'm not gonna bring them over to you. And I also have two or three, three 
um, more trays of tomatoes that I'm not gonna bring over here. But here's something new. This is the eggplant that I started in this Chinese takeout container. I will be putting this up on Sunday. And this is the sage that my grandfather started. It's doing good. And there are new babies coming up in the spots where they're missing, so. And it's starting to look like sage. It's getting its true leaves. Chives. I've got a tray of chives. <laughs> These chives are for my seedling sale. I just realized I made a mistake. I wasn't really looking at the labels early on, on on shelf one, unit one. Unit one, shelf one. When I said there was mahogany splendor hibiscus and on the other side was winged amobium, that was not. That was um, sweet Annie. Sweet Annie. This is a tray of winged amobium. And uh, I just realized. Anyway, I have an entire tray of winged amobium and um, like the sweet Annie had the tiny, tiny seeds, so I was confused for a second. So I have a ton on every single, in every single cell on this one. So I'm gonna have to thin this one out too. And the last thing on my shelf is another tray of Dianthus. Lots of different varieties here. Super excited. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging out with me in the grow room today. I am sweating. What I think I'm gonna do to make room on these shelves is bring the Lysianthus, like move that from in down here to the porch, the stock to the porch, what else can move to the porch? The delphinium can probably move to the porch. I'm not sure yet, let me check on that. Quite possibly the rubecchia. I've gotta check on the, the tenderness of that. Obviously, if it was gonna be getting low down into the upper 20s, like low 30s, I'd put frost cloth and I have enough to do three, four, five layers of frost cloth if I need to, just to make room on my shelving units. Cause I'm gonna need room. I'm gonna need some room in here. Yeah, that's not good, yeah. I have a ton of stuff to plant. I did this video early in the morning so that I could spend the rest of the day outside putting stuff in the ground, all the bare roots that I just got in the mail. And, oh, so the rest of the ranunculus. Oh. She gags sometimes, she's 10. Did I tell you that yet? So anyway, I've gotta get the rest of the stuff in the ground. So thank you so much for sticking around. If you're still here, holy guacamole, thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. Oh, bending over hurts. Dun, da, da, da. Oh. Those don't look good. <laughs> oh God, I'm not showing those today. Okay, if I kick this one more time, I quit. Happy Easter! Happy Easter, Easter Bunny! Bye! I don't know what I was there for. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. Bad, Nicole, bad. I'll never tell. Gotta need some room down here, yeah. Still not good. Nope, she's just passed right out. Look at her. She's passed out completely. Blubber. 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 You heard me.